This is Classic Cat, and I'm ready for an awesome conversation with the lively and powerful Queen of Rock herself, Star Colors, who is just a little bit of everything. She's a musician, singer, songwriter, bassist, entrepreneur, a little bit of everything. And for those of you who don't know, she was a part of George Clinton's Parliament Funkadelic, and she was pursued by... Prince and his band for many years and she's just an overall amazing lady and I'm really excited to talk about her career with her and just whatever she wants to talk about. Here's Star. Hello, how are you? I thought I was going to be the one who was going to be late. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm on that West Coast stupid time. Yeah. <laughs> crazy, great. Look at your beautiful hair. Look at your hair. It's awesome. It used to be all the way down to my knees. Wow. Don't cut it. I have, well, back, I, I don't plan to now. Maybe just like a little trim. Every right. Month, but like, uh, I, for, I used to be in dance competition. So I had to like do something because our hair, we had to wear our hair down. And it was just like, it would have like, hurt somebody or like tangled up or something. That is awesome that you are a dancer, girl. You were like, you were like, a, a, like are you the choreographer too and the director and everything? Yes. That's awesome. You, you have to send me a clip of one of your finished, you know, productions. I would love to see it. Yeah, I, I have a bunch of different ones. There's some on YouTube already, I think. Okay. And, um, do you do like you do modern or are you do are you do ballet and yeah i do i do it all i do tap jazz ballet hip-hop wow. uh styles because there's a lot of different wow and uh contemporary modern that's and awesome i love that i love that i love that i love that that's so awesome there's not enough real creative artists in our world today you know what I mean? And I mean, visual artists, dancer artists, musician artists is not enough. So I love that. That's just yeah. keep going. And I mean, I try to do like film, film stuff, um, mm -hmm. like, like filmmaking, because I, I really love movies and, and incorporating that with my dancing. And so I've been working on that. And, uh, I do musicals sometimes. I can sing a little. <laughs> My little production company that I'm just launching off the ground, we definitely want to get into like doing some documentaries of artists, of certain people. And I'm really trying to concentrate on women. So there might be a, you know, you might want to do a, a dance documentary thing and, you know, we would produce it and, you know, I'm trying to, to get us established that way. So. That's awesome. Yeah. I'd definitely be interested for sure. Cool. I mean, I, I know it's not a trained, I'm not a trained singer. So mm -hmm. that's partially why mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of don't know. I kind of had to figure it out and like music notes. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it, it was hard for me doing musicals at first to like learn that. And I still don't know yeah. exactly how to read music in regards to singing uh right right like did you did you learn how did you learn all that like well you know i started like when i was five years old mm -hmm. i asked my father for a guitar and my you know my father's he was a science professor he's you know gone now he was this great leader but he wasn't a musician and my mother's also a, a teacher and she's not a musician either, although she sings in church. So they were like, how does this kid know what a guitar is and why is she asking us for one? So he got me a little Roy Rogers little, you know, plastic little toy. He handed me this Roy Rogers little plastic thing and I looked at it and strummed it and went and handed it back and said, I said, I want a real guitar. And they were like, how the hell? So he got me a little uh yamaha acoustic nylon classical guitar strummed the guitar and went <gasps> and then i just like they put me in performing arts school before my private catholic school and it was it was the best like 
three or four years of pure artistic instruction. I had these awesome music teachers, this woman named Mrs. Hardy. She was just like this hippie woman that played harpsichord and acoustic guitar and stuff. So I started playing acoustic guitar, cello, and viola. And I love the cello. Cello is such a beautiful instrument. And of course, I was also learning how to sing during this time. And they started making us learn drama. Like they were starting to teach us about plays and this and that. So by the time I get to my private Catholic school, I'm in private guitar lessons now with the guitar teacher because he told my father, she's way more advanced than the rest of the kids. So she needs her own, you know, concentration. So I started taking private guitar lessons with him all the, all the time. I'm still learning how to sing in the chorus and the choirs that, that I'm in the whole time, right? Getting instructed how to sing properly and how, all this stuff. But the guitar thing, because I was a girl, that just, it, you know, it was on another trajectory, you know, and how you get treated, how I was getting treated. It was like I was an alien from Mars or something, you know, because you know, back in the, in this early seventies, there weren't. You know what I mean? It, I mean, like I remember when Taste of Honey came out in the seventies when I was a kid. She and I are friends now, by the way. The lady who does Boogie Oogie Oogie, uh -huh. and I saw her and was like, I was learning acoustic guitar, and I started hearing bass lines in the music. So I started playing bass on the guitar. So then. I had some friends say, hey, you need a bass guitar. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I, you know, kept my acoustic guitars, got a bass guitar, started learning how to play bass, and then went to college, uh, minored in music and majored in theater and, uh, and media broadcasting. I'm, I'm a theater actor, right? Yeah. So, all, so I decided, well, they're not going to teach you what you want to know musically. If you majored in music, it was only orchestration to go be a classical musician in an orchestra or learn jazz stuff and be a jazz teacher and then do it on the side. So I was like, nope. So I minored in music to study what I wanted, had a jazz vocal teacher, had a bass teacher, learned all this theory and stuff and, ma and, and majored in theater and broadcasting. And, and then just played in bands through college and, you know, kind of went up that way. And by the end of my college years, this is in Duquesne and Pittsburgh, which is like a steel mill, you know, blue collar working, you know, that's where the Pittsburgh Steelers are and all, you know, so yeah. it really wasn't, you know, it was like those of us who were artistic or musical, you kind of had to like reach for each other it really wasn't like a, a large community. The largest community they had outside of classical was their theater community. So when I'm in my last years of Duquesne and Prince, now it's the 80s, right? Yeah. Prince, Prince is God, right? He had just done Purple Rain and, you know, he's on like the second or third album after that. And I just said, you know what, I'm I'm going to Prince. So I started sending him demo tapes, little cassette demo tapes of four track music to his newly formed Paisley Park label. And I got back rejection letters, like three, four rejection letters, you know, the standard industry thing that they send out to people when they don't know you. Even if your stuff is all right, if they don't know you, they send out this traditional we don't take solicits, blah, 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 blah. So I just got tired of that and said, you know what? I'm going out there to Minnesota. We're going to find Paisley Park. I'm a fine prince. So I got on this mission. Like, Got to find that man. <laughs> hunted, hunted him down. Found out where he lived in Excelsior. Found out where Paisley Park was in Chanhassen. Drove in a snowstorm December 
89 going into 90 with my roommate from Pittsburgh to Minnesota. We follow trucks through the snowstorm. We get to Minneapolis, only have enough money to like scrounge. So we, we rent a boarding room at the University of Minnesota and I camp out there and truck out every day to go find Prince. <laughs> so I find his house. He has a big purple windmill in the background. I swear to God, it was unreal. Wait, in his backyard or like? In his, in his backyard, Prince had a huge purple windmill, okay? I was like, this has got to be his house. Who else in this neighborhood is going to So, of course, it was his house. The guard was like, you know, big, huge black gates and stuff, you know. There was a guard there, you know. He was like, well, honey, you know, I can't let you up. I said, I know, but just take my package. And, you know, I'm trying to find him. So he told me how to get to Paisley Park. So I was like, cool. So we leave his house. We go to Paisley Park. And I went there for a week straight, getting kicked out the parking lot, leaving notes on his car. And I said, dear Prince, I drove 17,000 miles. It was only 2,000. I drove 17,000 miles to give you my demo tape. Peace and love, star colors. And I would leave these like on his windshield, in his car seat. And the security would kick us out. So finally, I get invited back because I'm friends, I'm pen pal friends or phone pal friends with Eric Leeds and Matt Bliss and his horn players. Oh. They went there from Pittsburgh. D Eric Leeds went to my school. Uh, he went to, to Duquesne. And his brother Alan is head of Paisley Park. So he invites me in, finally, all right? So I finally get into Paisley Park, girl. I have a bass guitar on my shoulder, big winter coat on. I'm trying to slap lipstick on. Mind you, I'm only like 19. Like, I'm not even legal to drink yet, all right? And I'm breaking into Paisley Park like, oh. Walking in the doors like, oh, Paisley Park. Oh, oh. You know, I'm like, oh, wow. So I'm tripping. I'm like, all right, I got it. Yeah, like I gotta find him, I gotta find Prince. So I'm running, literally running through Paisley Park with a bass on and a bag of demo tapes looking for him. And his manager, Steve Fargnoli, sees me and calls him out and we we meet each other, we run into each other, I almost knock him down because I'm like this tall, he's like, you know, he's little, he's little. But he got a big, huge head and he's really good looking. But, you know, it was weird. You know, he has, like, on more makeup than I do. He has, like, this perfect eyeliner, and, you know, he's gorgeous. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, like, like I, I can't be distracted by how cute you are. I'm here to give you my demo. So the, man, Some men have better makeup skills than I do, and I've been doing makeup for years, and it's like, how do you do this? Do I mean, I mean, he was he was freaking gorgeous. And I was like, how this man okay like damn so mustache and shit so the manager gives me permission to speak to him for like 15 minutes before some meeting i was like cool thank you so we're standing there he reaches out to shake my hand and he he grabs my hand and never lets it go so i'm standing here like with my hand to him reaching in my bag for my demo tapes because he won't let it go i'm like all right cool well you just gonna have to deal with this so he's like hi my name is prince i'm like i know who you are okay my name is star colors okay i'm here to give you my demo tape he says well you know they they do things you know they have a business way to do things you have to take it to alan leeds who's the president of paisley park and then he'll he'll get it to me. I said, no, fuck that. I'm from Philadelphia, remember, okay? I'm from Philadelphia. I said, no, fuck that. I said, I gave that stuff. I'm giving it to you. And he was like, I've already broken into Paisley Park. He has no idea who I am. You know what I mean? Like, who is this woman? <laughs> like, and broke into my place with a bass on. And I don't care. I'm like, I've come too far, you know? So he's just like, Okay, I tell you what, you take this upstairs to Alan Leeds and you tell him if I don't get your demo tape tonight, I'm gonna kick somebody's motherfucking ass. 
I said, snatch. Okay, cool. I start running up the stairs. He's still standing there looking at me going. I mean, you know, he just tripped. So the, the manager takes him away to go to the meeting. I go burst into Mr. Lee's office. Mr. Leeds, Prince said if he don't get this tape tonight, he's going to kick somebody's motherfucking ass. <laughs> oh, come on. Sit down, dear. Sit down. Sits me down in his office. He opens up his top desk drawer. And all my rejected demos oh. are sitting on top of the desk. He says, is this you? I say, yeah, that's me. That's me. He said, oh, we didn't know who you were. He'll get it tonight. Come on, sit down. Relax. I'm like, oh, wow. The industry is a trip. So then the next night, I get a call to come back to Pace Park with my bass and be ready to play with him. The band at the time is the early new power generation is after the revolution and levi caesar dr fink is still there sheila E's on drums uh miko weaver is this band of people eric leads and them so they're in the studio finishing his love sexy album and he's late everybody else is there they tell me to go into the playroom wait for him a tech takes my bass soups it up. He's like, okay, just wait here. Prince will be right in here. So he comes in the room with all the notes that I wrote him, right? All the notes in his hand that I wrote him and left all over his cars. So he's reading them. He's going, Dear Prince, I drove 17,000 miles to give you my demo tape. Peace and love, star colors. You're like, oh my God. <laughs> like mortified but i don't care now it's too late to be embarrassed it's too late for... so he starts walking around me in a circle while i'm like down on the ground with my base like it, like he starts walking around me and this is what he says wow a girl female bass player huh I've never seen a girl bass player before. Well, you know, I'm really hard on my musicians. And he looks through the glass, through the studio, in the engineering room and sees my roommate, my Italian boyfriend, Armand, all right? And says, is that your boyfriend? Then he starts back to me. Well, you know, I'm tough on musicians. He's walking around a circle around me. Like, this is fucking insane. He's walking around the circle going, yeah, you know, I'm tough on female. You know, if you're going to be a bass player, my man, you're going to be a girl. And then he goes, are you sleeping with him? Oh, then he turns back and he keeps questioning me. Well, you know, I expect my musicians to do this and this and this and this. Are you living with him? By the time he walks around the fifth time, I'm like, screw this. I stand up. And now I'm taller than him. So I back him against the wall. I look, man, I told y'all I was from Philadelphia. Did you listen to the demo tape or not? Because I don't want to hear all this crazy shit. Because he a Gemini, crazy. So he goes, yes, I listened to your demo tape. I think you have a lot of talent. I think you have a lot of potential. I want to work with you. I think that you, your talent can be worked with. He takes his guitar, puts it on, looks at me and says, it's in B flat, come on. And starts playing. Sheila E comes in, she sits on the drum. Dr. Fink comes in, he sits on the keyboard. The engineer and them is behind the booth. I pick up the bass, I jump in with them, I start playing. Now he's tripping because I can actually play. And remember, I'm 19, right? So, so he's like, what? A girl, you can play. <laughs> he's dancing around. He's under my legs. He's in my face. He's like, <laughs> a girl bass player. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm like, you bastard. So I just keep playing. She was screaming at me to go, just lock with me. Just lock with me. Forget him. Forget him. He's dancing around tripping. He never stops. He starts soloing. He looks at me and says, you solo. I start playing another line. He goes, what? How do you know how to do that? He's losing it. Right? I'm like, 
Didn't you have Lisa and Wendy in the band? I mean, what? why are you? But this is a bass player, okay? Yeah. So it's another animal, right? I was, like, hey, I was like, yes, other women there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, that they didn't mean enough, you know, for you to be. So he's tripping, and a tech comes in the room and says, Prince, Miles Davis is at the airport. He needs you. Because Miles Davis was there recording at the time. And I had to wait for Miles Davis to leave before I could come in. It was a trip. So he runs out the room, throws his guitar in the air. A tech catches it in midair. He runs out. Sheila runs out. Fink runs out. And I'm standing against the wall like, <sighs> right? Sheila and he, Fink comes back in and says, Prince had to go get Miles Davis. He says he apologizes, but told us to keep playing with you. So come on, let's keep playing. I'm like, all right, cool. We keep playing for a while. Then we finish. Sheila says, well, come on, let's sit down and talk. So we sit down, her and I, and we talk about how difficult it is being females in the business. And she says that she's never had to audition before in her life because of being an Escovito, right? Because of who her family is. She said she could have never done what I did and how everybody's impressed and Prince is really impressed with you and he's gonna call you in the morning and stuff. And she gave me her number there in Minnesota. So I was like, all right, cool. So I go back to my little boarding room, tripping now, like, ah, oh, I don't this with Prince, oh my God. Now he calls the next day. You know, an assistant call says, Prince is gonna call you right now, you know, stay by your phone. I'm like, all right, I'm sitting on top of the phone because there's no cell phones at this time yet. Not in, Eight, nine, eight, eighty, eighty. Only you know, rich people had them, not like normal people, right? Yeah. So nobody has cell phones yet. And so uh, car phones. Yeah. Right, right. But only like rich people have them, right? So I don't have one. So I'm sitting on top of the phone waiting for him to call. So he calls. Ring, ring, ring. Hello, hello, hi. This is Prince. I just wanted to apologize to you and say thank you for. Come and I said, oh, thank you, thank you, you know, oh my God, I can't, girl, people call and they have no idea that I'm in the middle of something, and, and, um, and he's like, oh, listen, I, I, I really, um, I really like your talent and I want to work with you. I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but you can stay here with me while I finish the Love Sexy album, and then we're going to go out on tour, and then when we come back we can get to your project. I was like, hmm. Now, I'm young, but I'm not completely stupid. And I, I knew that he, 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 was a, he was a gigolo, you know? He had Vanity and Apollonia and Suzette and this one and that one. You know, I didn't want to be one of them. So I said, because he said three times, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but you could stay here with me while I finish this. So I told him, you know what? I'm going to go back to school, finish, go back home, and when you finish, let's hook back up. He said, all right, I can't wait to, to work with you and see you. Well, when I see him again, I'm hired by George Clinton in the Parliament Funkadelic. Now I'm a Funkadelic member. So I tell George the whole story because George Clinton was signed to his Paisley Park label as an artist. So P-Funk had to go to Minnesota to do some television show that Prince wanted all the artists to do. So I went on my first European tour with P-Funk. And when we came back, we went straight to Minnesota. So I'm like, listen, George, I don't know if Prince is really going to remember me. You know, it was an encounter for a week that, you know, we went through a week and a half. And he says, are you crazy? He says, of course he's going to remember who you are. How many girls with a bass breaks into Paisley Park? Okay. And gets, he's like, yeah, he's going to remember you. That was a pretty intense event. So you know I what I mean? So, so, the last in impression on that. No, like, so we get to face the part. Um, they're setting up this TV thing. They're doing people's makeup and they're doing the sound stage and we're walking through and I'm with George and, and uh, the, the hierarchy of the, the P-Funk group. And here comes Prince and go, Hey Prince. Hey George. Hey, how you doing? Hey, hey. He looks over his shoulder 
Star? Star Colors? What are you doing here with George and the P-Funk? George starts, starts going, huh, yeah, she Funkadelic. She Funkadelic. You can't have her. You can't have her. Come on, baby. Come on. Now, everybody's running after George through Paisley. Prince and his people are tripping because they're like, what are you doing with them? For the next two years, he comes out and visits Key Funk on the road to watch me with them and tried to get me and this other singer and guitarist to leave and come to him. And George wouldn't let us go. He was like, no, 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 no. So that was the beginning of my professional yeah. <laughs> career. So, like, did, did you want to go back to Prince or did you ever? You know what? It, it was, it, you know, it was weird because since they were friends, you would think, yeah. like, okay, let's work this out, right? But George and them weren't weren't functioning like that. And, you know, they were playing this egocentric chess game. I did want to, you know, go check out what he was doing, but I didn't want to be put on the shelf to wait. And I was already actively in the P-Funk. So I didn't. You know, when I look back now and think, well, you know, if it could have been worked out where I could have like went for a year, you know, mm -hmm. and went with Prince and then seen whatever might have happened, you know, that would have been, you know, cool. But um, as it worked out, it, you know, it, it, I, it worked out the other way where I was featured in the P-Funk and this whole thing and got this tenure, but... That was that was a uh, uh, it was crazy and it was a lesson of life, <laughs> you know, and um, and he continued to like just peripherally stay in contact until, you know, he sadly got strung out on the drugs that just took him out, you know. So that was it, and then of course you know you don't know about anything like that at that time, like you know, like the last thing I would have ever thought was that Prince would be an addict to some from, you know, just not in a million years where I, you know what I mean? And so how things uh, turned out, I, I wish that I would have been in contact with him. You know what I'm saying? To go, Hey man, you know, but at that point he had already like cut, you know, just cut access to him. Like, People who were in his bands couldn't even get to him, you know, so it was it was bad. And then, you know, the, the tragedy happened. So, you know, you look back and think about stuff like that, but you just you don't know, you know, in those earlier days, you just. And for a while, it seemed like he was happy. And then, you know, when he got married um, and then he mm -hmm. had that loss of, you know, his child and. Right. He never recovered. Yeah, it was tragic for him to cut off his wife like that when they were so good together. Yeah, and you know, Monte is an amazing dancer. You know, she was an amazing dancer, just beautiful, amazing. And she talked about how he never recovered from the, the when that that baby died, and then the drug thing just spiraled, and he just kept cutting cutting access. You know, people the people who really cared about him, he cut off contact with. So all he had around him were these leeches, you know, who were just taking a paycheck and letting him be drugged down and fucked up. So it was, you know, it was sad. It was just like, oh, God. Yeah, that happens a lot, unfortunately, to many celebrities. They just have the hangers on, the leeches, and it just it either drains you or you eventually push them away and push them out and be free from all that. I mean, I, and 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 it's a it's it's too frequent of a story too. You know what I mean? It's it it's 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 too frequent of a story. It happens too much. You know, I, every time every time I hear it, I'm just like, oh, fuck. You know, I mean, when 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 that happened with him, people called me for a week, and I just didn't answer the phone. I just could not deal with 
I mean, because people knew like, oh God, you you know him, you you know your friends, but it was like, well, you know what? Obviously, I, I I wasn't in his inner circle to help stop that mess, you know. So I was destroyed. I just was like done for a couple of months, and 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 you know, and angry, you know, because you you hate to see. You hate to see that happen to to these brilliant, special artists that you know will never happen again. You know you hate to see that. So that that was painful. That was painful to see that. Yeah, uh, I had a whole dance show about the price of fame and like dealing with a lot of that, wow. that celebrities deal with. And I did use two Michael Jackson songs, uh, Tabloid Junkie and The Price of Fame. Wow. And those were, you know, and there was like another piece uh, called Superstar by Take That. I don't know if you've ever heard of that group. They're a British band. Yeah. Uh, my favorite. And so it, that one was like us portraying wow. celebrities and like, there was people that came in and they were like draining us like vampires did you did you did have did you film it did they film it yeah i would please send me a clip i would love to see that yeah i would love to see that because that's what i'm talking about it's like that kind of artistry is needed so much across the board you know especially today you know it, it our, our artistic vision and and uh, uh, courage and and you know and, and creative courage is so needed you know our, our society is screaming for it and really we see what the politicians are doing mm, okay we see what the bullshit uh, 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 reality celebrity crap uh, you know so it it, it really needs that those true artistic people to come through with you know so keep going girl i want to produce your your movie <laughs> thank you <laughs> have to figure out what we're gonna do and document it and everything so i have to let you know what the next two tracks from your living galaxy album are gonna be on the station yeah yeah, yeah right i'm totally forgot like what are the songs <laughs> So this one, the one like I had three top favorites, and there was like two that I was like trying to go back and forth on. But definitely, seduce me is Ooh. One of the sexy one, and I almost picked let your star shine, which one would have been one too. Maybe later, we'll see. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, the next one is I'll kick your mother funky. You <laughs> That one. That's a favorite, you know. Uh, um, uh, Rod, both Rod and Audie really like that one too. Rod is on the station and he's part of Sir Rod. Uh, yeah, they both love that one. I thought it was really, I thought it was both powerful and amusing. You're right. It's, it's, it's one of my personal fate. When I need to be cheered up, if I'm depressed or I just need a, a, I'll put it on to listen to it myself because it makes me laugh. It makes me happy. Yeah. So that's, that's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. I was listening to it earlier and I was like, I feel this. Like, I was like, people that's what it's talk, about. I'm not going to put up with your crap. <laughs> okay. And you can use it in any situation like that you want. I'm not going to put up with your crap. I'll kick your motherfucking ass. I'm not going to put up with your crap. I'll kick your motherfucking ass. Yeah, just, you know, it should be an anthem for when you need that kind of anthem. There you go. That's awesome, girl. Yay! I think I'm going to do the intro for Seduce Me, and then uh, Rock, I think it's going to be um, Raw doing the intro for the other one. And so... So the other, I think Seduce Me might be on my special, on uh, because I have oh. the special songs coming. Is up. that is that is that like something that I don't know that you could utilize for your dance troupe? I know it's kind of yeah. like kind of yeah. country rock, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know? I could do I could do something eventually. I knew I know I was definitely gonna use uh, 
the Sir Rod uh, song next time. And then, you know, I can find, I'm not sure. It depends on what I do. Right, right. Right, right, totally. Because I, I was listening to this one intro um, I just did from Janet Jackson. Okay. I, her last album, some of the songs reminded me of yours. Oh, oh that's it. She had a whole mixture of different styles in that uh, last album, Unbreakable. And uh, the one that I picked, uh, The Great Forever, I think it's, it's called. Okay. Uh, that one reminded me of the tabloid junkie and the Price of Fame one that I had done before. And wow. And it was talking about. That's cool. Oh, don't judge me. Mm -hmm. on my relationships or wherever like talking about the tabloids and, mm -hmm. and, and all these sort of judgments on them and you know, not I know that's right well you know what especially in in miss janice's case you know she had just um gone through her third marriage divorce and she just had a baby mm -hmm. so she was probably like i'm not hearing none of this shit. you know what i mean she's probably like just done like leave me alone you know and now i have this baby so really leave me alone yeah so, yeah you know I, I can hear that yeah for sure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that so next special hopefully you'll be on all you i did my uh i think my your others uh one that i did uh, i'm still standing my intro for that i'll probably tell, still have on this special too well, girl, the first of all, I have the people, everybody who I turn on to to the radio station, they're just like, oh, my gosh, this is a real station. They're awesome. They're playing all this music and you're you're in here with this. I'm like, yeah, because these guys are like the, the, the you know, part of this artistic visionary thing that we need we all you know what i mean what what you guys what audi's doing what rod you guys are doing is so needed i cannot stress enough and if if it's you guys paving the way then that's how stuff happens i mean back in the day when it was still analog radio that that man alan uh reed alan what's his name who was in cleveland right he just started playing music that he thought was great from his cleveland radio station and what ended up happening was it spread and the whole country started following what he was doing musically and to, you know, that's why the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is is physically in Cleveland because of what he was doing with his radio station, you know, just look from where he was. And, and this is before internet and all that, right? So this is that analog radio where you had to like tune in if you had to be close enough to listen. So, you know, that it it's time for that again, you know, and the 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 format of of what you guys are doing it with the real music that's just it's such a joy it's such a a a, a plus to know that here's a real radio station people that's playing real artists and real music they're not following some pop bullshit list of the same crap you know that you when you and and I'm telling you, it's, it's just like mind blowing. So people, everybody I turn on to it, I'm, you know, they're loving it. And I hope that they continue to tune in because this is the kind of movement that, you know, or like just, just think a year from now, me, you, Audi, Rod, a few other folks, they're gonna ask us to do a documentary about how we brought real live music back to the forefront of the industry. And people are buying vinyl records and CDs again and listening to real, you watch. Because it's such a, a, such a void right now, yeah. you know? Like I've heard 
uh, certain classic rockers like Steven Van Zandt from, from Bruce Springsteen. He has a, a, a radio show, I don't know, a podcast radio show that he's strictly playing real, you know, music and, and real artists. And he's one of the few who, who talks about how much of a need we are, you know, it, in the whole world is in need of this. So I look at it as you're carrying out a mission, okay? And like I said, you're a Renaissance lady. <laughs> Dual thing. I mean, you know, I, I feel I feel that way too. Just being a, a theater actor, you know, uh, uh, it is it's our mission to carry out these artistic things that we can do and put them out here in the world so people can can be encouraged, so they can be enlightened, so they can be happy, so they can not look at the crap on TV and be depressed and have something else to turn to and go, this makes me feel whatever, you know, great, yeah. happy, you know, encouraged. So, uh, you know, I, I, I just look at it now like there's no other way but to, to carry on. And, and I'm so glad, I'm so thankful that you guys found me because being an independent artist, and not coming from the big machine, you know, and that, that takes you, puts it in the pop filter and just fucks it all up. It, it, it's, it's like a David and Goliath thing, you know, where I'm David with a little slingshot <laughs> and the industry is Goliath. And I'm like, bang, you know, so, I mean, it's, you know, that's what it, it feels like. And like a lot of like, even, Paul McCartney songs are like he's still making some great hits or right. what should be hits. And right. you know, like right. a lot of I mean he's had like success with like his newest album. But um, you're right. But you're it's right. Not on mainstream radio. Exactly. Now what how is that possible? He's a Beatle, people. He started our modern music industry for us as we know it. How is that possible that you're not playing this man's music? Yeah, it's like uh like and it sounds like anything that's on the radio, like something right. or rock radio anyway. Right. Uh but I, I I saw something like even Britney Spears can't get on the radio anymore. It's like what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and actually, this, there, there, was, there was this one song that was pretty you know decent. I mean, sometimes I it, I like more of her '90s stuff, but like I recognize it for what right. it is. It's like right. it's teen pop, right? Whatever. I mean, there's right. a certain sort of thing. It's fun, it's right? Catchy, whatever. Right. But even she can't get on the radio. And you know what? Now that's that's ridiculously sad and funny to hear that because you you could not hear her what ten years ago. Yeah. But that's just the that's the bullshit of the industry, you know. And that's that's you why. A amount of time, and then you're out. Like. I mean, that's why it, it it is so important what you guys are doing and. And, and 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 you're right. When I looked on the list of artists, I was like, look at all these main, like huge people. This is unbelievable. So I was like, well, you know what? There you go. It just shows you how you how the playing field can be evened out because of the bullshit of the industry. Yeah, and a lot of uh, rock songs. I mean, I guess there are some rock stations, uh, depending on where you're at but it's i mean they're not it's not mainstream it's not pop so it's not right. as heard even right. if you want it to be heard right. when popular it's, right it's still a sub it's still a secondary genre and that's you know sad but yeah, that is that's crazy that's but crazy. we on Met bar retro radio audi and and mike and rod and janie and all the all of us, uh, like, it, it's awesome that we have this station to put all these different types of artists, blues, rock. How long have you been, how, how did you get with them? And how long have you been with them? So back, well, I've been friends with Audie for a while since 
I think 2013. Well, I met him online on 2000 in 2013 uh, because we're both Jerry Lewis fans. We're huge fans, and so okay. <laughs> eventually, yeah, eventually uh, we he got his, he started the radio station, uh, and you know he asked me to promote it every once in a while or you know nice. check it out. And then last year, he asked me to do some intros. And I was like, wow, I don't think I have a voice for radio or whatever or something. Because uh, I don't know, sometimes like I don't like my voice when I hear it back. So hmm. I was like, OK, well, I'll, I'll work on it. But actually, when I do intros, I was, I'm like, oh, okay. I sound, I sound good. And I don't know. Now it just, you have a great radio voice. You have, you, yeah, you have, you have an excellent radio voice. And, and a lot of times when you hear you first hear, hear yourself on recording, yeah. you'll think, oh, but trust me, <laughs> you have a natural, excellent, you know, radio voice completely. So that's what, that's what he heard. Yeah. You know, I does like when you sing like do you ever like oh like as a personal thing do you ever like i i need to redo that or something or is hell it yeah hell yeah girl when i first started recording i definitely had to get used to hearing my voice on tape because one you know if you notice my speaking voice is very low <laughs> and on the phone i'll get called a man like i know it's you know but i guess people hear it to be so low uh -huh. so you know but when i sing i can uh you know i have a, a a contralto span you know i can go from low alto way up to soprano in a rock voice which took some time to learn how to do properly in key and in the right thing so definitely something that i you know developed even though i have been singing since i was a child yeah. the the development of this voice now definitely took me a couple of years and there were certainly times where i was like Ugh, uh. but you know like i said once you get used to hearing your voice on a recording then you can start going okay let me and and that's you know i literally grew into you know what i mean grew into the into the voice <laughs> yeah like i was about to say like those screams that you hit on some of those <laughs> i was like you have to learn to keep that pitch control otherwise it'll sound terrible yeah that that took me i would say that took me a good three years straight to fine tune that ability yeah you know and mind you i'm like a student of steven tyler aerosmith david lee roth van halen paul stanley kiss you know yeah. um bon jovi <laughs> bon jovi bono a Tina turner oh yeah i can see that and if you notice they're all men because i knew that okay you already have this low voice it's like a man's so if you learn how the men sing, you're going to be powerful. And so that's what I did. Yeah. You know, I, I, I literally learned from those cats and just kept working on it. And then just once you're in the studio and, and you learn how to, to work the mic, mm -hmm. you know, so either you're, you want not like this and you're not way far away from here, you know, you kind of, it's all, right. yeah, just stuff you got to learn and figure out, <laughs> you know? But now, now I, I, I really, I really like my voice now. Mm -hmm. But it took me all this time to get to the point where it's, it's good to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't always that way, but it is now. And you know, and I think that just comes with experience and you know, age as you just mature and come into your being, especially as, as women, mm -hmm. because. Girl, we're gonna do a whole women in the industry thing. Like, I'm, I really want to do a documentary about that, about us in this industry and the different shits and 
challenges and bullshits and things that women have to go through. Totally different than the men. Totally different. So keep that in mind. I'm, uh, you know, throwing that out there, you know, because you definitely, you would definitely, I would absolutely want to include you as the on air uh, 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 DJ host talent that you are and as a choreographer, dancer, artist. I mean, too important. So you, I would definitely be like, all right, Kayla, come on. We got to come do this. You know, so I'm, 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 I'm taking notes about these things as we go along because, you know, if I have to look up and see another woman and now I'm talking about all of us in music and film because, you know, I started thinking back to the 50s and 60s when, when Marilyn Monroe and Dorothy Dandridge and Ava Gardner and, uh, you know, these women were totally destroyed. But, you know, before they were 40 years old, you yeah, know what and, I mean? And Dorothy Dandridge, like, it, it just makes me really sad because she could have been so much bigger, but she was, like, controlled. Well, both by her race and by that Otto Preminger guy who, for some reason, she got mixed up with. And he was, like, controlling what role right. she was choosing. And that was just, like, it just ruined, like, her career, basically. It restricted her very much. And I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's too many stories of th these uh, great women who just are destroyed before they can even live out their life in this industry. I mean, I just I just uh, uh, saw Lady Sings the Blues with Diana Ross from the 70s. Now, I hadn't seen that in I don't know how long, but I was probably too young when I saw it anyway. So seeing it now as an adult. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Jesus, okay. And, and, and then, you know, you go from that to Whitney Houston. Yeah. I mean, you know, so it is it's it's too important for us to support each other, stay strong, you know, to to kind of be that wind under the thing if if you feel like, you know, because the industry will do that to you. It will just fuck you up. You know, and and it did to those women and and people like say to me now, like, damn, star, you know, you're so hard. You know, you're such a hard ass. You're such a, you know, and, and, and people think, oh, well, that's because you're from P-Funk, you know, from Funkadelic, you know, I'm tough. It's beyond that. It's all this shit that we're talking about that happens to women. And it's me not becoming a Whitney Houston, not becoming a Dorothy or a Marilyn or a, you know, a Billie Holiday, you know what I mean? It's not, or Amy Winehouse, it's not becoming that, it's overcoming the shit and staying strong. So if you have to call me hard, then fuck you, I'm hard, okay? That's what it is, because I'm not going down the other way. <laughs> you know what I mean? I I'm not gonna- Exactly. I'm not going to crumble into depression and get drugged out and be like, oh, I'm dead. No, fuck that. You know, I'm too much of a fighter. I practice martial arts. Okay. I'm like a green belt. <laughs> you gotta take out. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just like, that's how you have to actually get back into it. It's very expensive to go to uh, study martial arts. That's another thing people don't realize. It's very costly. But, um, you know, just, just, just just keeping a, a keeping the focus you know what i mean and and doing what we're doing so i think that's important now let me ask you this how many other women do those guys have does the does, does, you know out and, and rod and them have are you the only woman uh, there's janie who's uh mike's wife uh then she's on there and so it's just us two right now really and um i think I think, yeah, I think that's the only two, and then uh, it's three to four uh, guys who do the intros as well. I mean, Audie does the intros, Mike does them, uh, Rod, 
And then there's a couple other guys uh, that do intros from time to time. Wow. So, so, uh, so, so just you and one other lady. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Janie has her own um, special, like, but hers is every week, uh, mine um, every month or so. Mm -hmm. are they all are they all in nashville i yes yes except for me okay yeah. okay you you are really you really the shit then because you're like you're really like on it and responsible because just to keep track of the the time <laughs> the time changes you know what I mean? Because yeah. what what is Tennessee? Where what is they're uh, Central Time? What is that? So they're, so they're one hour ahead of me. So two hours ahead of you. So they're see Central that's Central. right there. I'm like oh, <laughs> too much confusion. But you know, but see, yeah, see, so you you keep you maintain your your chair. You maintain your post because you are doing some legendary stuff you know uh i mean listen there's not a lot of women in radio doing which not not like not like you would think yeah you know what i mean not like you would think not like it should be so that's significant too see that's something else definitely you know talk about so you let me know if they give you any shit <laughs> so i can rain down on them but um, you know what I, what I would love to do when we're all clear and go to Nashville and do some live, you know, broadcast stuff. Yeah. And then possibly some some shows that they would know about in the area, you know, to perform. That I would love to do that. That would be really cool. Yeah, it's like uh, in person. Tell them to fly you in. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, we were, or I could, we can tell. You know what I mean? There. Yeah, so, just tell them. What, like uh, either way, yeah. I, you know what I mean. I'd love I to do that. I, that I had, would be very I, cool. I had planned, or like you know, maybe a road trip one day to go see Audi, or for sure. And then I mean, oh, oh yeah. Were, I mean, he has all the recording equipment in in his house, I guess. Um, well, well, see, you know, first of all, he's in Music City. Nashville is Music City. I mean, uh, I know it's the country capital, but it's also a music capital. Period. So that would be that would be the one to, to do. You know what I mean? Go yeah. there, do some live stuff on the air, do yeah. some shows somewhere around in Nashville. I mean, he records his music with Rod and and stuff like in their house or houses or whatever. Um, so right. they have like all the recording equipment for sure. Going back for a moment when we were discussing Billie Holiday, I don't know if you have heard that there's a new movie out about her, The United States versus Billie Holiday on Hulu. I haven't seen it yet. Have you seen it? I, I haven't seen it, but I saw the preview. Andra Day is her name. She sounds a lot like Billy. She's she's perfect today of singers today to do it because you're right. She sounds like or she's she's a retro jazzy type singer. And she's from here in San Diego. Mm. You know, so um I would love to see her in that for sure. And just the titles let me know that they're taking it right from them persecuting her for being a heroin addict. Yeah. So, like, wow. You know what I mean? I'm eager to see it, but I hope they represent Billy the right way. How, yeah. And her whole entire characterization, for sure. I, I hope so, too. I mean, I know Lady Sings the Blues wasn't entirely accurate, but it was kind of hollywoodized but you know they, they did a they did a, you know what they did a they did a more uh gritty job than 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 i remember because yeah. when it starts off it starts yeah. off with them um bringing her into jail yeah like that's I mean, how lady sings the blues starts off yeah <laughs> you know well, i mean it was a little bit you know changed but like uh, some of the critiques that i've seen are like it it cleaned it up i was like well they're i mean they're showing her 
doing drugs. I mean, I don't think so. They, they need they need to watch it again yeah. because what I just saw, I was blown away. I was like, you know, and and Ross did an amazing job playing the heroin addict. Yeah. To, to not ever be on heroin, you know what I mean? She was yeah. amazing. So, you know, they, I, again, you know, the the stories of women in this business and what we go through is crazy, crazy. And a lot of uh, singers are good, turn out to be good actors. Uh, it's always an odd, odd thing mm -hmm. that they're so natural um, <laughs> at acting, except for, I mean, there's only maybe one actor eddie fisher <laughs> that wasn't so great at acting but <laughs> the rest of them <laughs> like even elvis elvis gets criticized for his acting but like i mean with the right material like he, he, he was you know trying hard and he 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 could do it with the right material i think and had he done he it did, he, you know what he did he did great for what they put him in you know, in the kind of movies, he was great. Yeah. You know, what his you later, do? I mean, you know, later films that showed possibly where he could go if he had the right stuff. Right. And of course, Frank Sinatra was one of the greatest. You know. How about that? How about that? You're right. Ooh, that's a real good one. That's a wow. You're right. You're right. That's true. So I mean, you know, um. I, it, if, when you get the chance, you know, to to go into something, if I get the opportunity to <clears throat> spread those acting chops, I will call on all of my theater training <laughs> and summon it into the character, yeah. you know, and um, and just and just be glad that um, you, and just be glad that I'm still here. <laughs> You're still standing. <laughs> still standing, girl. Okay. <laughs> I love you so much for that. So, you know, so yeah, you know, please tell, uh, how do you pronounce his name? I keep saying Audi. 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 Well, I Audi? call him Audi. Audi. I don't know. Audi. Uh, I'm following I, Audi. I, Audi. Audi. I think it just depends on what side of the country you're from. Audi sounds, Audi sounds correct. <laughs> so our our all... friend dad says, makes it like Audi. Or Audi. <laughs> I guess I could always send you the link to the show that me, Audi, and our friend Thad does, which is a film podcast, The Total Film Critic, where we discuss movies that we love and that are important to us oh i would love that, I would uh, love that. There's, that would one, be there's one i'm editing now where we 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 talk about auntie mame which was from 1958 with rosalind russell i love auntie mame that's one of my <laughs> favorite movies oh my god ah! <laughs> Dude, are you serious yeah Girl, I and love so, Audi didn't get to watch that one in time, so me and Thad, which is our other our other uh, friend, discuss it though. Oh my oh, wait a minute. Do you you know I'm gonna go find it tonight and and, and watch it or get it and pull it up to watch it tomorrow morning. One of my absolute favorites. Yeah. She was a genius and that was just the best the just the best story. Now check it out. Now was Mame not a super goddess or what? Yeah. So yeah, okay, you, Mame so, is a are, yeah. Are you talking? So your favorite one is the one with Rosalind Russell, not Lucille Ball, right? No, listen, I I respect Lucille Ball yeah. and all that, but I'm sorry, the one with Rosalind Russell is the one. Yeah, okay. She is Mame. Yeah. She is Mame. Period. Period. She is the ultimate mame. I could watch. I could watch that movie over and over and over and never be tired. Always be. You know, I I love it. It's one of my absolute favorites. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like she played her on Broadway too, and so she was the ultimate. <sighs> That's why she was so perfect in the movie. She had already done it in the theater. See. Yeah. You're telling me something there, see? A lot of a lot of those jokes make me like. I was discussing. I I hadn't caught the one joke because they were like until now I hadn't caught the joke. Uh, and then the last time I saw it, I caught it, and I was like, 
it's the part where um, the Gloria girl, the oh. it was <laughs> she she was like it's totally restricted, and then right. right, right. the name was like I'll go have a blood test. <laughs> <laughs> right. They're talking about the neighborhood. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, these people. <laughs> and and you know what? I could take her wardrobe and work it. Okay. <laughs> work I, I, it. She has, even when she was like sort of poor, she still like was really well. I mean I mean she's still Paul, but probably had her clothes from, you know From the heyday. Yeah. Yeah, but that's just one of the just. I, oh God, that I can't believe you said that. I'm just so happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm editing that, and then we're um, there's this one movie that Audi is it's his favorite movie. It's called The Hebrew Hammer. The Hebrew Hammer. Yeah. <laughs> it's from 2000. I think 2002, and it, it it's, it's it's hilarious. Uh, it's uh, basically a, a superhero, Jewish superhero type guy who's also channeling Shaft. Like there's like a parody Jewish Shaft song. <laughs> I have to see that. And like basically, uh, like all these these guys that like both Jews and blacks combined to fight Santa's son who's like oh. trying to destroy Kwanzaa and uh, Hanukkah. Hanukkah, oh my God, I have to see that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hilarious. Uh, Adam Goldberg is the lead on that. Okay. I think, uh, I think I had to like download it from somewhere. <laughs> Like, yes, like I think I think my friend ripped it off the his DVD and uh, we had to like share it amongst ourselves because it was harder to find. But if That's I find it, I'll send it to you. I would love to see that. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. So going back to music, I'm totally jealous of all the instruments you can play. Like I tried to learn how to play the guitar when I was little, but I I guess I don't know what happened there. I just gave up on it, I guess. And I, I really want to learn how to play the piano. You can always, you can always, you can always learn. Just give yourself time and, and, and make it so it's, you know, it's, it's pleasurable to you. Don't make it like there's some evil teacher standing over you no. going. Eh, eh, eh. Well, and I was teaching myself. So like for the guitar and I was like, oh, my fingers are getting like rubbed off. <laughs> Yeah, my yeah, yeah my. So I was like, I, I was. Usually, I don't give up on things, but like, I think it's just somehow I just got busy with dance and other stuff, and somehow it just got. That's lost. cool. That's cool. But, yeah. Girl, so, listen, please. I started learning them things when I'm telling you, when I was a child. I was fucking little bitty, you know what I mean? Yeah. Long time ago. <laughs> so, you just I just kind of grew into them but you can always you know especially especially now while we're all down you know you can totally you know teach yourself I, i'm actually started taking some um uh, astronomy oh. course online and some some business courses i'm trying to like uh get my business my master's in business since i'm a ceo now okay. i figured well, I should have some CEO credentials. So I've been like slowly trying to get a, a business master's, but you know, through like the college classes that yeah. you can get that you don't have to pay for. Uh -huh. And then if you want the certificate to, to show that you, that's, that's how I'm doing it because I refuse to go back to the loans and all that crap again. Yeah. I, I still owe from the first time, yeah. you know, so. So it was just like, all right, for the masters, you're gonna do something else. But yeah, you know, I'm trying to to, to do that too. So yeah, I'm, um, I'm learning Spanish, right? I mean, I'm half Spanish, but like, I only knew like certain words and phrases, and cool. not like how to connect sentences. Even though I learned it in high school, I don't know how. I was. That's cool. That's but, cool. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna. That's something I'm sticking with. I've been. Three, oh no, 
almost almost a year, like about 10 months on Duolingo on my phone. <laughs> so taking nice. The, nice. Taking all those lessons and hopefully I will be able to communicate. Yes. Um, as my boyfriend, his family only speak Beth, like, right. only speak Spanish mostly. So to be able to communicate with them, you know, let's really and I have to... he, he he speaks English, but the family yeah. speaks Spanish. Yeah, he mm -hmm. came here when he was uh, like six years old. So they just they know enough, That's... Like a little decent amount, but right. It was That's hard. Cool. For, it's harder for people That's... like that are older to like learn languages. I know. I don't know. I was, I wanted to teach myself Italian because I speak French. I've had French like for 12 years throughout school since like first grade and shit, you know, took it in college. And so just like, you know, I can understand a little Spanish. I can understand a little Italian, but I want to learn Italian. Yeah. I love Italian. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, so that's a challenge too. Like, you know, but, but just keeping yourself learning. You know that that's that that all contributes to you being the Renaissance goddess. Yeah. You got to do a piece called Renaissance Goddess. There you go. <laughs> yeah, um, like you're like who's huh? <laughs> and you want to tell them when they ask you, well, Kaylee, who's the Renaissance goddess? You tell them I am. Okay, and you do your thing. That's right, girl. That's right. <laughs> Come down, That's right. like Auntie Mae, and throw like her uh, right. thing. I. That's right. I'm your Auntie Mae. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, for like, real, for real. Uh, my my boyfriend Victor, he was like uh, getting into astronomy too, and um, like he's been doing like different oh, languages, oh. like I. I think he was doing he was in French, uh, Portuguese. I think he was looking into and stuff, and you know, and he speaks, I think, a teeny bit of German. So he's like, wow. he's very interested in like learning different languages. Wow. Like I've always, since I was a little kid, like I used to go have a short. We still have a shortwave radio, and nice. get like learning you would get like english to chinese or english wow. to french lessons from mm -hmm. those countries wow because they would come in and they, they would have their normal programs but then they would also have programs on the radio this was in the 90s where they would just have people like that's cool you know, chinese so like i was that's learning really cool. i was like saying these like Mandarin Chinese phrases to other kids randomly, <laughs> and they're like, "What?" Chinese, Chinese is hard, man. Chinese is hard. Japanese is hard. I only can understand a few words in, in Japanese because I practice Japanese Buddhism, but to speak it, those those are hard. German is hard. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Austrian is hard. Some languages are harder to learn you know so you have an aptitude for them that's awesome yeah i think they're romantic languages at least like once you get a certain like no one language mm -hmm. at least then you know certain other like the variations through the other languages um because mm -hmm. i mean you know spanish italian portuguese are, are, are pretty close mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. french just a little bit you know Mm -hmm. different, but mm -hmm. there's that so i mean once i get through spanish i might i think i was i was learning i want to learn hebrew too um because well, you learn hebrew that'll be awesome yeah because my mom my mom um was trying to learn hebrew for a while and then i mean i'm six percent Sephardic Jewish, six <laughs> percent. It's through my mom's side. So like the Spanish Jews, you wow. know, came through from Spain probably. Right. We don't know who 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 was Jewish. Somebody was, but but like they probably right, had right, right. 
you know, it probably converted to Catholicism at some point. So that's cool. But my mom that's always cool. she always felt that she was had Jewish ancestry, and she was right. <laughs> so it was it was weird because she she didn't know. Yeah. And then like I took wow. a DNA thing <laughs> and was like, oh, you know, you know that's cool. Did you do one? I got to do one of those. Do yeah. My mom, I can't really tell her that I, I did that because she'll be like, they have your blood or whatever. But yeah, <laughs> it, it's cool. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I understand that, like, but it was actually through like a place that does like more Jewish ancestry too. And like, I don't think they would be like, right. We're going to sell it and make clones out of it or something. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think they're going to make clones out of us. Or, I bet she's like worried about, I don't know. Who knows? That's cute. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Well, I am super excited. I'm so happy. Yay. Tell them thank you. Here's a tidbit of news going on. I'm going to be featured in the March Bass Player Magazine. It's my first bass player interview in the bass player magazine so it comes out in the uk march 5th and the usa version comes out march 23rd that's so great and, and we'll definitely advertise that for sure i'll make sure to send you the web link so you guys can you know say okay this, here's our artist in bass player magazine you know and of course you know you can actually get the magazine i have to like get it myself i'm gonna ask that you know i think they'll send me like one copy but i'm gonna go out and buy you know several yeah. <laughs> copies of it too so so let them know that 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 um that's happening okay you're I, like busy have... you're busy busy yeah i'm definitely busy i i've got this special coming up on the station actually with my friend kayla called uncensored okay to and it's about songs nice. that double entendres, songs that were censored on the radio, songs that were maybe banned. Nice. There are three Prince songs on there that are just, you know, nice. dirty songs. <laughs> there's one, it's one is, uh, uh, is there's, I don't know if you heard, because Ani was shocked. One of my favorites. Oh, oh, tell me. Uh, there, well, there was well, one, one of my favorites one. is, um, uh, shit, what, oh my god, um, oh, 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 girl from the 90s, um, oh, well, there's oh one my one gosh, Get Off, was what, we, what the one that we used was called Get Off, is one, and then there's, okay, Get Off is one, but, and Head, <laughs> this oh. one is, um, uh, Okay, head, head, but this one is, 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 oh God, girl. Wait, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. I gotta find it because the third one is because, sister, which is okay, okay. <laughs> it's about insects. You're right. You're, you're right. Those, those, those old ones. Yeah. Those old ones. Okay, but wait a minute. I mean, let me find because I, I, first of all, for me to even not remember. One of his songs is one of my favorites that I listen to constantly. I need my ass kicked. Okay, here we go. It is Sexy Motherfucker. Oh, okay. Sexy MF. Sexy. Have you heard Sexy MF? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, homework, homework, homework for you tonight. Go to YouTube, okay? Type in Prince Sexy MF, you're gonna love the song. You watch it after you listen to it. You let me know if you like it or not. Okay. But I think you're gonna like it. Okay. Well, it is have, it's an have, awesome song. We have so many songs that we couldn't include. I, 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 we picked three songs of Prince. I mean, there was there was a lot to choose from. Them and the Rolling Stones. I think this one. I think this one's gonna make you. I think this one's gonna make your list because. It's definitely the kind of uh, music and vibe that you would love. You can really do a serious dance number to it. I, I can, yeah, you're gonna love it. So I, I think I think this is gonna be an addition 
for you, but sexy MF, baby. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, some of those songs from like the 1920s and 1930s. Right. Like, right. Put some of these other current singers like it would make their right. explode because it, it just really. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the blues singers were just filthy ladies. <laughs> well, you know what? So you're right. You're right. A lot of those blues, uh, them early your thirties, forties blues artists. You're right. Yeah. You know the ones that like Robert Johnson was selling his soul and stuff to the devil and stuff. That <laughs> some of those songs are deep. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, Ma Rainey, we didn't have time to like. We just sh chose like some songs that like overall like if there's certain songs that were like in the same genre of things then like we just chose one of them like right. uh lucille bogan i don't know if you've heard of her but she's she's okay. the filthiest <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know have you heard of millie jackson yeah oh oh i think we used one of her songs I think it's. I think it's, you gotta throw, you gotta oh, no, throw Millie the, Jackson in no, there. No, wait. It's no, okay. Never mind. It's Denise LaSalle. We used one of her songs. Millie Jackson. I did one. Of okay. Years. Uh. You might as well throw Millie in there. She does. She belongs on that list. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like there was like we were just trying to bring it down because otherwise we had like a five hour show. Wow. So yeah, because I can see that. Or at least, well, I mean, it's going to be, I don't know, I haven't edited it yet, so I might just have to have a certain amount on the radio and then um, <laughs> do something later, like on YouTube, cool. show the rest, because, I mean, some right. of them had multiple songs, some of them are, like, from, a lot from the Rolling Stones, because they're just oh yeah, like, yeah. a bunch of stuff, right. and then uh, there was just a lot of different fun i feel like oh aerosmith had a lot <laughs> yeah 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 they got some they definitely have some too for sure yeah you know i mean some of them so sometimes i didn't even know what aerosmith was saying so i didn't even know like if that was neither do they know. honey neither neither do they okay steven don't know what the hell he's saying either yeah like <laughs> okay so i was like aerosmith Michael Jackson on occasion, and it was Don. It was this one song from Donovan called "Mellow Yellow." I don't know if you ever heard this. Oh song. yeah, so, yeah. So literally one whole verse. I'm like, what is he saying? Right. <laughs> like, like it's just gibberish. I looked. I had to look up the lyrics because nothing made sense. <laughs> nothing ever makes sense on that. Like I understand the rest of the song, but nothing on uh, this one was clear. And, yeah, so, yeah Mellow, Mellow Yellow also made our list. That's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Well, I love, I love that. I love that show. That that you know. That's. I'll have, a, to, I'll have to tell you because we've we've already recorded it, so maybe we might not. Maybe we'll include the, that Prince one that you suggested on a. Because I think you're gonna like that one, so I, I can't wait for you to tell me if you, if you like it or not. I think you will. Well, probably like if we do another special, we'll probably include that and a whole bunch of other songs that we missed. That you know, that's cool. awesome too. But that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Well, I'll let you have your dinner. If well, thank you for 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 getting me with my off time crazy ass self. Okay. So you, my darling, continue being the empress goddess that you are. Thank you. You and you too. <laughs> okay. I'm. Yes, that's right. That's right. And I'm. I'm seriously pulling up Auntie Mame to watch in the morning. Uh, like you just like I'm. I'm so <laughs> just like yes. yes, yes, do yes, it. yes. I'll. I'll have a whole bunch of things to send you. Apparently. <laughs> Yeah, please, please. I, I love all that. I, I love studying stuff. I love reading stuff. I love watching stuff. And like I said, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are, you know? still, are you still in lockdown over there? or like? Well, you know, I mean, yeah. Yeah, pretty much, you know what I mean? But none I mean, I don't go anywhere just to like teach dance. Yeah. I mean, you know, nothing, no, nothing's open to you know what i mean so yeah i'm just kind of like 
here. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to like work on yourself. And <clears throat> yeah, right. Better at things. And well, all right, my girl. Bye, everybody. On the, that's that's watched this whole thing. <laughs> bye. Au revoir. <laughs> Salut. <laughs> all right. Bon <laughs> all right, girl. Bye. You take care. All right, talk all right to you. bye, honey. Hey, this is Classic Cat, and you've been listening to my discussion and interview with Star Colors. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. We had a lot of fun, and hopefully, I'll get to talk to Star again really soon.